currently got Pro S3 is being built. Four minutes aboard. Still not nozzle optimized. That's okay. I'm really not fast. I just want reliable placement. Um, there's another panel in there waiting to go. And there's a, another one out here waiting to go. And there is a, another one over here waiting to go into the stencil printer. And there are some panels in the oven. And the finishing is coming out. Oops, soon. There's a panel just there. Stopping each one still and checking them because it's the first time I'm running these boards. But that one's gone in and that one's waiting again. Oh, sorry about the moving camera and it should be coming out soon. There was another panel all the way in there, a bit hard to see all the way back there. We're already taking the first panel off today and checked it, pulled it apart, made sure the boards work. No point making lots of them if I've got the placement wrong. So I used to do 15 boards per panel on these. I've reduced it down to 12 because I've now matched the width for my tiny boards, tiny panels, so I don't have to adjust the conveyor length at all. There you go, Pro S3s with the uh, new RF layout on it. And I need to check this one and I need to send this one through. I'm doing it manually because I have to clean each one with IPA. Because unfortunately, they come from JLC PCB in a pretty bad state. All the eating is discolored, they need to be cleaned first. Perfect pasting. Still having a few problems with those diodes. The uh, pocket that they sit in is just massive. So the diode just moves around and bounces around. Not many, I mean, this is my one, two, three, four, fifth panel I'm making. And I've only had, oops, five pick issues. So it's not terrible, but you know, I don't know how to solve it other than speaking to the manufacturer and saying why you're putting it in such big pockets. But I'm okay to lose five of them. Bloody compressor kicks in every time I want to take a video. So I just ran another panel. Um, this is my ninth. And I just made a small tweak to it and managed to get it down to uh, 339 which is pretty cool. Okay, I've been asked by a few people to uh, give a closer look at the inside of the machine. The machine's currently off. It makes a bit of a racket. It's on just because of the compressor, the amount of air it requires, but I have actually ordered the upgrade for this machine that moves most of the air stuff inside the machine. So it doesn't rely on my external compressor as much, which is good. It's gonna save me a, quite a bit of cost in power and noise of the screw compressor running all the time. 
quite large inside compared to what I'm used to. You can see the feeder bank at the front. These are all eight millimeter feeders. And then there's a couple of 12s there. And then there's the 44, which is for the ESP32 mini modules that I'm using. This takes up five slots. The 12 and 16s only take up two, which is pretty good. Uh, on my previous machines with the CL feeders, uh, a 12 and a 16 took up three slots. So they take up less and I obviously start with a lot more feeder slots. So something that's new in here that I worked on on my stream this week, something that I've been wanting to do for a while was to see if I could move trays inside. So this is officially not supported. The mechanism, everything about the way trays work are either on the back, they've got to be on the back feeders positions, either the static tray feeder, which I've showed before, I'll show again in a moment, or you need to use their fully auto massive automatic tray machines and they're all designed to go on the back. So the software assumes that the specific trays that go on the back, it's not like the Chinese software where a tray is just a, an array of parts that you can kind of put anywhere on the machine. This doesn't really work that way. Although once you bypass the whole, I'm using a full size tray on this back feeder position thing, apparently I can actually move the pick position. So I built this rack that sits on the back that I've been cable tied in yet. So I'm gonna pull them back out again and just lower them, I think. And um, I've got two trays in there just with 3D printed brackets. And I've reprogrammed the two projects that use these to pick them from the front and it's working really well. So um, I've just saved myself all those back feeder positions, which I could have used by taking the, the static tray feeder out and back in and out, in and out, in and out, but that could only hold one tray anyway. Now I've got two trays permanently mounted in here. And I think what I might do actually is, uh, this is a suggestion from a mate of mine, Peter Thompson. He was actually thinking for a different reason, uh, putting this whole thing on linear rails and having it so we could automate more than two trays and move them around as my projects need. I actually like the idea of putting it on rails so I can slide the trays out so I can load them. I can have them slide out here to the side and I could actually load the trays in and then push it back in because this machine is so deep. Getting in here <laughs> to actually install this was a nightmare. Like uh, that's why I haven't even done the cable ties as well. And just, I can't imagine what it would be like pulling the trays out, knocking all the parts and stuff. So it is actually easy to get to from the back but the default position for the pick and place head is at the back. So it's kind of in the way. I'd have to power the machine up, move the head forward to be able to get access from the back. A few people are asking about having a look at the pick and place head, the system. I mean, that is just insane. It looks like something out of uh, some futuristic robot movie. You can't see right now with the power off, but there are digital displays and alphanumeric displays and little like bar, LED bar chart things and stuff everywhere all around the side here that gives you a, a complete uh, real-time readout of all sorts of stuff that's happening on the machine. Nothing I need to be monitoring during production, but it's quite interesting how they've assembled all of that. So it's, yeah, it's all pretty chunky linear rails. Uh, lots of people have commented about the rods. I don't know, I I'm not a mechanical guy. Uh, I can't really tell you <laughs> anything other than this just throws this pick and place head around so fast. I'm just amazed that it can do that. The way the clamping works in the machine is, uh, it's quite interesting. It's from this bed. So this moves up and down. And then these rods here, they hit the bottom of this, right? As it comes up, these pins. And that's how the clamping works. So when a board comes in, that support table comes up and that's useful because you can put support pins and stuff down. I've actually now moved away from support pins and I've actually 3D printed some custom supports. So this is, they've got magnets on the bottom, right? So it just locks in place. That way I've got a completely flat bed to go on. I don't have to worry about positioning pins all the time. So I've got a few different sizes of those for different width boards to give myself some good support. Sensors on the side to detect if anything has happened here. So if any tape popped or anything, anything that's gone bad here, it can detect that. Let's go around to the back. So that's the, the back of the, the pick and place head. You can see all the hardware inside there. That is a really big cap. Never seen a cap so short and wide. Electrolytic, it's pretty cool. Uh, fans everywhere. Just in here. I mean, some of you might spot things that are interesting, some might not. 
Uh, there's the Cyber Optics laser system, the laser curtain as they call it. Uh, there's all the nozzle change tray. So these are the, the feeder area that uh, I was using this. So it's my new feeder rack that I built. Uh, I'm still waiting for some more of these plastic things from Juki. They've been ordered. They're coming with the vacuum system. So I got some aluminium plate cut. I designed all this up. I cut it on my laser cutter with acrylic to make sure everything lined up and it did. So then I got them cut out of metal. I'm gonna go around the corner. So I got some of my speed feeders there and I still have all these ones in boxes. So that's on wheels, I can move it around, but that's the static tray holder. So technically, I mean, unless I need to use three trays on one project, I can still use this. Otherwise they can sit here and I can reuse all of this, reclaim this space, which is great because I've got more parts to go on the machine. I try to get as many of my parts on here permanently all the time. So when I'm switching projects, I can just load up a new project file, paste up the board, run the board, right? I don't want to be switching feeders, switching parts, reloading parts onto new feeders. You know, I'm not doing CM work where I have to pull the whole machine apart, like in terms of components and reload up a client's components and then run it and then pull it all off again. I only manufacture my own stuff. So I want to be always able to just start manufacturing whenever I want. Uh, there is facilities here to put another screen on the back. Uh, either it's just a static screen I can put myself or another touch screen that actually has all the electronics and everything with it so you can fully control the machine from the back. Um, and I do have a spot here to put another loader if I want, a feeder loader like I've got on the front. That would probably be useful because right now I have to, you know, if one of these run out and I need to reload it, I need to take it all the way around to the front, plug it in, load up the part and bring it all the way around the back again, which I'm gonna have to do with the USB connectors in a moment. So that would be handy to have another one of those here, but I haven't ordered one yet. You know, once you get into this realm, everything costs and uh, things aren't cheap. So, you know, for the sake of me having to walk around and switch one of these out for the time being, I'd do that rather than spending the, whatever the entry fee is for here. Or maybe I could even take one of those plastic plates that are coming for the feeder rack and make my own, I don't know. But I need the electronics here as well. It needs to be powered. Well, that's it. Um, if there's anything else anyone wants to know, please give me a hoy. Okay, catch you later, bye.